does high AMH cause twins? The simple short answer here is no. AMH is not related to whether a patient will have a singleton pregnancy or a twin pregnancy. The nuance in this answer, I suppose, is that some patients with polycystic ovary syndrome will have a very high AMH. And some patients with polycystic ovary syndrome, which is a condition associated with hormonal imbalance and lack of normal frequent ovulation, will require oral medication for ovulation induction. Medications like clomiphene citrate or clomid or letrozole. And those medications can sometimes have a side effect of getting more than one follicle to grow and therefore have a slight risk of twins. So on its own, a patient with an elevated AMH is not at increased risk for twins unless they are treated with fertility medications that have a side effect of getting more than one follicle to grow. And that's something that can be monitored in a fertility clinic office uh, with ultrasound to make sure that there's only one follicle being ovulated. What if you have a high AMH? Does that automatically mean that you have PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome? The answer here is that patients with PCOS, I should say first what PCOS is. So PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome, and it's a disorder associated with a hormonal imbalance and oftentimes irregular ovulation. So PCOS is a syndrome where patients tend not to ovulate regularly. They may ovulate infrequently or not at all, and they have clinical or laboratory elements evidence of elevated androgens, which are more male type hormones. And so they might have acne, which is lab, uh, clinical evidence of elevated androgens or unwanted hair on their body, or they may have blood tests that are abnormal and elevated testosterone, uh, for instance. And so those patients oftentimes have what the, the name for the condition is polycystic ovaries. It really is poorly named. It should be called poly follicular ovary syndrome because they're not cysts. They're actually follicles, but a lot of them. And so uh, the ovary has this string of pearls appearance with lots of tiny follicles on the periphery of the ovary. So all of those follicles, we know that follicles produce AMH. So the more follicles someone has, the higher their AMH is. So oftentimes someone with classic PCOS will have an elevated AMH. There are also patients who are just fertile individuals walking around the world, ovulating normally, without severe acne or unwanted hair, who just have robust AMH levels. And then those patients do not have polycystic ovary syndrome. They just have good egg reserve. And so it's not uncommon for me to see a patient who's been told she has PCOS by her primary care physician or, or OBGYN generalist, but all it is is that her AMH is 13 she ovulates every month and she has very good egg reserve. And for that patient, it should be celebratory, uh, not, not panic inducing. And so uh, there are also patients with polycystic ovary syndrome who maybe have more obesity and, and that's causing her uh, or, or related to her polycystic ovary syndrome where her AMH is not elevated. In general, uh, patients with PCOS can be seen to have higher levels of AMH, but it doesn't define the condition.